Welcome to Horn Online Training, Training Module 4.1, GPS Introduction. I'm your trainer, Edwin Tunney, Training and Technical Specialist for Horn USA Incorporated. During the GPS introductory training, we'll talk about an overview of GPS, uh, grooving part off systems. We'll talk about some of the value added features, the competitor success in the market, and some short tips on how to apply the systems. If you look at the GPS system as a whole, you have two cutting edge inserts and you have three cutting edge inserts. So if you see here, the 209 series is the smallest all the way up to the 229, which is the largest of the, the blanks. 209 means that it has two indexes and approximately a nine millimeter long blank length. So the 209, the 216 are all internal systems. 217 is internal, external. 223 is internal, external. 224 and 229 are also internal and external systems. Horn also offers three index inserts and six index inserts. So you have the 312 series the 315, the 316, and the 64T. So the 312 is a top clamp system. The 315 and 316 are both uh, direct mount or they're mounted with uh, a screw. The 64T is also a direct mount system uh, with a screw and features six cutting edges. If you look at all the systems as a whole, uh, graphically here, the 209, 216 are internal, the 223, 217, 224, 229, 315, and 312 have both internal and external holder systems. The 316 and the 64T are both primarily external grooving systems. If you look at the nomenclature, it doesn't really follow an ISO or ANSI standard. Um, this follows the horn nomenclature system. So you have a S means it's precision centered. The series means 224. So a 224 insert will fit with a 224 holder system. W is the width in millimeters. Geometry, so this is a three geometry. And the last is the corner radius in millimeter. So this would be a 0.2 millimeter corner radius or eight thousandths of an inch. Always uh, be sure the nomenclature can give you a clue as to what the, the characteristics of the insert are, but always use, uh, use the technical documentation and make sure you know what all the dimensions are before ordering. The first couple systems that we'll look at are the 209 and 216. Uh, so these are mainly internal grooving and profiling. You do have a few geometries offered for each system. You have a 52, a 1A and a KF. You have a 5, a 1A and a KF for the 216 system. So the 209, 216, some of the value added features are that has an elliptical cross section. So that's gonna give you a really good rigidity during cutting. You have precision coolant. You have very good repeatability on the insert uh, to minimize offsets and time spent touching off the tool. Uh, so link, length repeatability is plus or minus two thousandths. You have a parallel uh, clamping prism. Uh, so it's very secure fixing in the pocket. And then they also feature the, uh, the newer AS45 grade, which is aluminum titanium nitride. The next system we'll talk about is the 223. So the 223 is a smaller system, but it does offer uh, some geometries, as you can see, the five, the three, and the C. So the, the five for side turning, the three uh, for grooving, and also the C for uh, part off and grooving. You have a uh, holder systems, you have square shanks, you have blades, 
You have cartridge type holders. Uh, you also have boring bars. Uh, so the B223 system and the also cassettes. So you have a, a mountable cassette system for the 223 on a boring platform. The value added for the 223 is uh, it's compatible with the 123 single cutting edge insert. That's going to give you a longer um, reach into the part or a deeper T-max. It has an inverted locating prism, and that allows for more material under the insert, uh, so for a more stable cut. Three-point contact, carbide shanks are also available with internal coolant. Inch and metric holders are available, and precision pressed and circlip geometries are available on the 223 system. The 217 is a, is a big platform. You have external grooving, internal grooving, corner relief, circlip grooving. Uh, you also have, uh, this is a system that a lot of specials are built on. Uh, it's a mainly ground, uh, ground system, ground top rate, ground flanks on some inserts. And so it lends itself to doing uh, special widths or shapes on the 217 system. You have really square shank tools. Uh, you have boring bars. You have some corner relieving uh, tools, so inserts and holders, both in a long and short extended reach. You have some just corner clearance inserts. Uh, if you need to do a, a relief behind for a clearance or for a thread profile on a boss in a part. Also some cartridge holders as well. The value added uh, feature uh, for the 217 is multiple length options for deep bores. Inch and metric holders are available. A very rigid support. Uh, this isn't, um, these are not self clamped. They have a top clamp, so very, very rigid. Three point contact with the center relief. Uh, very high precision. Standard groove and chamfer geometries. And then, as mentioned, high volume of specials with the 217. The 224, uh, this is the first series that you get into a heavy option of geometries. So you have external grooving, part off, corner relief, internal grooving, and full profile threading. Uh, the threading tends to be uh, more in the, the metric side, uh, but as a made to order, we can offer you uh, just about any thread imaginable. You have square shank holders, you have corner relief tools, you have blades, you have uh, specific tools uh, for getting close to the, the tail stock, so reinforced blades. You have boring bars, you have cassette type holders, you also have uh, corner relief and face grooving tools. So you have face grooving tools to, um, to run on the face and also uh, tools to run uh, down the side of a bore with the, uh, the cassette system uh, for the 224 uh, setup. The value added features, uh, three point contact, full range of uh, metric widths, inch and metric shank sizes. You have high precision locating prism uh, for secure clamping and geometries. Uh, that's probably the biggest reason to adapt to the 224 is the available geometries. Uh, Horn adds geometries uh, from time to time, and I think there's overall uh, probably 26 different geometries offered. Uh, so any materials that you need to tackle or any um, applications that require a specific geometry, you're covered. The 229 is similar. Um, Similar to the 224, it just gives you a little bit a bigger insert, so more potential for bigger T-maxes. There's external grooving, part off, corner relief, internal grooving, full profile threading, also face grooving. A lot of the same holder options, uh, square shanks for external grooving and part off uh, profiling. You have corner relieving tools, you have face groovers and you have boring bars, uh, both standard boring bars and also the cassette type. You also have, again, uh, face grooving tools available in the 229 
holder offering. Same thing, three point contact, full range of metric widths, inch and metric holders, high precision locating prism, a wide range of geometries uh, for really any of the most difficult applications. Uh, you will find a geometry to tackle that. The 312 is the first of the three index systems. Uh, you see it's, it features a top clamp. Uh, that gives you a little bit um, of more rigidity uh, for the insert. Also, um, this system can go really narrow with groove widths. I think the smallest width uh, go down to about 20 thousandths of an inch. So if you have really, really small, narrow external grooves, so you can do external grooving, part off, corner relief, multi-grooving, internal grooving, poly V grooving, um, face grooving. So 312 has a range of geometries, um, three point contact, full range of inch and metric width. So there's inch and metric inserts in this program, high precision locating prism for secure clamping. Holder-wise, um, square shanks, you have also uh, some options in the Groff system for uh, Swiss or for, in general, uh, just a modular tooling system with adjustable cutting height. You have specific uh, holders for star machines. You have face groovers. You have face groovers that are cranked. So if you want to run on a sub turret, you have corner relieving tools. You also have uh, the 340 system is fairly interesting. If you wanna do multiple grooves at one time, you can do that with the 312 platform. Also boring bars and then specific uh, tools for machines like Traub. You have some ground, uh, ground options on chip breakers. So you have the zero zero, you have a, basically a special chip breaker uh, for made to order inserts based on the application. You also have a V, you have precision centered as well. You have the F, so for very, uh, very easy cutting, if you have a, a small component or a hollow component like a, a tube, you have the five, you have the D and the C for parting off. So the five for side turning, uh, the D for uh, grooving with uh, excellent chip control. Next three edge or three index system is the 315. Uh, so the 315 is a thicker insert. So it lends itself to external grooving, internal grooving, face grooving, internal full profile threading, internal partial profile threading, external full profile threading, external partial profile threading. So it's very, very much a, a threading a platform with the 315. Uh, part of that is it's a direct mount pocket, so uh, you don't have any issue with the insert moving, so you can run at the, the higher uh, linear feed that you require with threading. 315 has a standard type holder, so square shank, cranked holders, boring bars, uh, cassette or cartridge type holders. Also tipped inserts, so CBN tipped uh, for hard machining, so hard finishing of product, of components. The insert is also very robust, uh, so the insert is, is a really good thick insert, so that lends itself uh, to a lot of uh, special forms and made to orders. You have full and partial profile threading, fully ground geometries, three point contact as well. So just a, a solid system overall. You have fully ground uh, geometries. So you have the zero, zero, and then you have a chip breaker for special inserts. The 316 is a smaller program, uh, but nonetheless, you have some direct crust systems like uh, the five geometry, the EN for grooving and part off and the FY for uh, long chipping materials and really just a, a light touch during grooving. The value added 
features for 316 are uh, precision uh, center geometries. It's a higher thickness in the center. Uh, so you get the, the beefiness in the center, so it's not uh, fragile, uh, but also the ability to, to go fairly narrow with the width and then that uh, tri-lobe for locating. The 64T, uh, the 64T is a, a really unique system for external grooving, part off, uh, circlip grooving, corner relief, a uh, full profile threading. You have internal coolant and 16, 20, and 25 millimeter shanks. I think there's more geometries now available for the 64T, um, but you have the DL and the 1A. So you have a, a direct press geometry um, precision centered on there uh, with the 64T. Again, it features uh, six cutting edges. So you got six cutting edges. It's really soft cutting. You have internal coolant on the holder, a very stable seating. Uh, edges uh, are protected from uh, swarf. So when you generate a chip on this cutting edge, you're not uh, inadvertently damaging uh, the other cutting edges. It features our, our latest coating, uh, EG55, and uh, that's a, a very good coating, high PIMS coating, very dense uh, structure for long tool life. And then it's actually tin flashed, so uh, the wear detection is, is easier to see. Here's an example of um, a market success with a, with a horn tool against a competitor. So this is on a Akuma ES L10, 8620 forged material. And the problem was on this sliding clutch was the chip control and tool life. So if you can see, we've all, we've all been there with chip control and had these kind of nasty chips creating problems with the chip conveyor uh, wrapping up on other tools in the in the turret and uh, forcing the machine to be stopped and clean all those chips. So um, the competitor tool was two cutting edges, 650 SFM, 8 thou inch per rev. The horn tool was a 229, so uh, available geometry there. So we used an HR uh, Ford. So an HR geometry with a 0.4 or 16 thousandths rad in AS62, two cutting edges, 650 SFM, same as the competitor tool, but we're able to increase the feed to 12 thousandths inch per rev. The result of that, uh, the competitor was $33, ours was 2330. Cycle time was 1.56 minutes with the competitor. Ours was 1.32 minutes. Parts for edge for the competitor was 100 to 130. The horn tool was 180 to 210. So cost per piece of 25 cents with the competitor and 11 cents with the horn tool. Uh, horn provided 176% insert cost per piece reduction and broke the chip. And most importantly, as you can see, uh, the chips went from very unpredictable and problematic uh, to very managed uh, chip size, easy to remove with a chip, con chip conveyor, uh, and also not wrapping up around other tools on the turret. So how to apply. So just a few tips um, kind of at the end of this uh, presentation. So make sure, uh, verify the insert size matches the pocket size. Uh, so you're going to find that in the catalog. Um, I won't stop to, to show you that, but if you pick up one of our catalogs, you'll see that there's a size for the, for the holder, um, pocket size, and also a size for the insert. So make sure those match up. Replace worn hardware on a regular basis. Clean all the location surfaces. Tighten torques and cap screws to the proper torque setting. Uh, we always recommend using uh, torque limiting drivers. It just uh, it makes your inserts and your hardware last longer um, and you get the best out of the tool. Avoid modification on the holders to correct clearance issues. Uh, we do a very, very large amount of made orders. 
So if you have an application uh, that would require it, we can, you know, engineer uh, clearance without uh, modifying it with a with a grinder. So always keep that in mind. Some critical questions to ask. Uh, these are questions that our tech department uh, would like to know, uh, just so we can help give you the best support uh, for our product. So material and condition. So what kind of material it is, is it? And what condition is it in? So is it annealed? Uh, is it a specific heat treatment? The minimum bore diameter or D-min? The diameter of the part? So that is important, even though you're, even though you might just be grooving in into the part uh, a short depth of groove. Our holders are designed uh, to provide the maximum support for the insert. So you do need to pay attention to what the diameter of the part is. So the D max, the depth of groove or T max, the corner radius, the width of groove, the tolerance, the surface finish, and the interrupted cuts. So are there uh, other parts about the process we need to be aware of. The other thing, um, a test you can do to make sure things are aligned properly uh, is, of course, you want to follow your machine, your machine tool procedures to make sure that everything is aligned uh, perpendicular, parallel, uh, where it needs to be. Uh, but if you notice vibration present in one direction and not the other, uh, you need to check your alignment. So chances are your insert is healed and this, this alpha angle is too, uh, is too large, um, causing that vibration. The other thing, just some uh, quick tips on, on feed. So uh, really the four, five and six millimeter widths are and up are recommended for side turning. Uh, really, you wanna make sure you have those those sizes and not below to do a bunch of uh, a side turning just because you have a better grip on the insert and more rigidity. Uh, the cutting depth, the cutting depth max should really be the width of the groover times uh, 0.7 or really a max uh, of four millimeter. So specifically talking about side turning, really cap it out at four. Uh, just take more passes, you're gonna get better life out of your tool. The minimum depth of cut you should take is the corner radius. So uh, if you don't have that much depth to take, uh, I would recommend using a smaller radius. You really wanna cut on the edge of the tool and not on the rad. Max feed rate, uh, a good rule of thumb is to take the width of the tool uh, times 0.1. So 10% of the, of the width, uh, and that's gonna give you a good max feed rate. Side turning, uh, so if you're creating a much larger uh, groove than your insert, this is a way that you can do that effectively and get the best tool life. Uh, so the basics of this are to step down, plunge and turn. And then you wanna stop short of the wall uh, five times the feed. So whatever, uh, whatever the feed you're running, if you're running uh, five thousandths of feed per rev, you want to stop at 25 thousandths on each level that you're cutting. Uh, so, and you'll basically stair step this out. Uh, that's going to help you avoid uh, chip recutting uh, and pinching your insert. So it's going to give you better, better tool life. And then the final pass, uh, the final cleanup for the tool is to plunge out your, your steps and clean those off and, and do your finish on the bottom. Another, um, when grooving a, a chamfer on an equal width, um, you really wanna plunge and retract first and then do your chamfers uh, because you don't wanna cut uh, with the insert on two cutting faces at the same time. It just, uh, it's less stable, and uh, you're gonna put pressure on the insert, uh, additional unneeded pressure. So if you do have a groove width that's wider, you wanna plunge out the center first, and then you wanna plunge uh, the, the farthest point or the closest point to your, your chuck or your clamping, 
and then do your chamfer. Then you wanna plunge the other side, then do your chamfer at step five here. All right, that concludes today's training. Uh, don't forget to uh, check out all of our other great training content, uh, both live and on our YouTube channel. Uh, we'll post these periodically. Uh, so don't forget to hit the subscribe button so you get the alert uh, and you know when we've posted something new. Thanks again. Um, hope to see you in the next live training. Thanks and have a good day.